what's good y'all it's boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out raw underground was odd the title says it all uh i i just don't know what they were trying to do with raw underground like they were trying to make it more of this like fight club you know what i'm saying like it was supposed to be like this underground thing after monday night raw more of a fight club feel like it was just a ring with no ropes it was like a work shoot fight i don't know but it just it didn't work it, it, it didn't work it was just i don't know what it was it was weird i mean granted i give them credit for i guess trying something different but it i, I didn't know i'm just like is this a work shoot wwe has done this in the past with like work shoots like they at one point was trying to do like this boxing thing it's like a work shoot but it, it didn't really work and it's like they kind of recreated that thing now well back then we more of the mma style i guess but once again it didn't work so we're gonna check out this very strange thing they were trying to uh to put over appreciate all love and support let's get into this one man the thunderdome era of wwe was flat out odd at times since everything was in disarray, allowed them to try out new ideas. Some of these ideas were welcomed, while others, <laughs> not so much. New. It was August of 2020. The build to SummerSlam was well underway, and from out of nowhere, they brought out a MMA Fight Club-esque concept, Raw Underground. Raw Underground isn't exactly a foreign concept in wrestling. It reminds me of those fight pit matches and, of course, Brawl for All, except this was scripted. You weren't seeing shoot fights and JBL getting knocked out, and in some ways, keyword some ways, Having MMA, full-on MMA in pro wrestling is just confusing. There wasn't really yeah. high hopes for this one. But the biggest problem was not the MMA with Raw Underground here. It's a whole different story. For now, let's talk about how Raw Underground came to be. Ever since the turn of the millennium, you had heard of WWE's interest in pursuing MMA. Shane McMahon in particular was very interested in purchasing UFC. This was pre-Dana White, pre Zufa, and around the time the WWF was at its absolute peak. That never materialized, and a second attempt by the McMahons came around 2004, but they weren't willing to go all out. Because even if Vince did purchase UFC, it would have been almost impossible to control two huge companies at the mm -hmm. same time, and I doubt that UFC would have become as big as it was. Then sometime in the mid-2000s, yeah. Shane really wanted to buy Pride. That's crazy. Think about that. If Vince would have purchased UFC, do you think it would have been as big as it was as it is now? I'm not sure. Because his focus, you know, was still on the WWE. So it probably would have been just like a little passion project. And I don't know if it would have went anywhere. So that would have been interesting. And I'm pretty sure he would have implemented some of that entertainment into something that's supposed to be, you know, real combat sports. So I believe this was around late 2006 when Pride was... Uh dying a bit they had some issues some financial issues and they wanted to sell shane wanted to take control of the company and have his own thing but vince was skeptical feeling he can't control the outcomes because investing in said wrestler means you expect said investment to come good with a knockout all that hype would be for nothing of yep. course a couple of months later in march of 2007 zufa purchased pride for around 65 million and brought the fighters to ufc basically ending the company and it was a while before you heard some rumblings of wwe and mma crossing over of course brock lesnar within the span of two months at one point had a ufc fight against mark hunt and faced randy orton at SummerSlam. And since wwe around 2019 and 20 was trying a lot of new things that dark raw with the 24 7 championship cuck storylines <laughs> because the ratings were falling rapidly viewers didn't care were hopping off and it didn't help that monday night football was near personally at the time watching waiting until 1 or 2 a.m for raw and watching disappointment unfold is the worst case scenario and whenever they did try something you knew it was because of desperation as you guys may know shane mcmahon is a huge fan of mma he's friends with chuck liddell and has been closely following the sport so doing raw underground was a big thing for him when asked if he has input on Raw Underground, quite a bit. This goes way back. This isn't an original concept. This is more going back to Roman Gladiator times where they used to have short matches. There's been lots of stuff or similar things, I should say, in Japan for quite some time. I've been traveling to Japan since the late 80s when I was a teenager, and I saw some of this. And it's always resonated with me. You mentioned MMA. A lot of my friends do that sport. I also practice multiple forms of it, and I really enjoy it. So if you can blend that with WWE Entertainment and what we can have come together, it's a work in progress, and that's what we're trying to accomplish. So as you see here, he's been wanting to do this for a while. They tried to purchase UFC Pride, but those purchases were unsuccessful, mm. which leads us 
to Raw Underground. On the August 3rd, 2020 episode of Raw, Underground officially <laughs> debuted. They had some dancers, which were actual strippers, I should note. The oh. dim lights fitting a grungy location. And oh, wow. Damn. They pay some real strippers to be out there. That's crazy. <laughs> Amy McMahon hosted the show. There was a huge emphasis on a man by the name of Daba Kato. He immediately destroyed some random, killed another one, all while Shane's talking on the mic. And as you can see here, there was an importance to MMA. It was a really different vibe, especially when you see how smooth regular WWE felt. This was just out there and it was gritty. It also helped the wrestlers with the background in Matt Wrestling and Combat Sports like Dolph Ziggler because they immediately looked cool out there because of how cold-hearted he was in trying to knock out his opponent. Then you have the newly formed Hurt Business looking mm -hmm. like the final bosses of the room. Poor guy over here didn't know what he was getting into. And yeah. the dancers kind of felt provocative. As this era of WWE didn't really have that type of stuff. Not this era, it's the current era. But you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. Even Shelton Benjamin looked like a badass just by stepping in here. They cleared the room of everybody with ease and showed that the underground was anybody's place. They just have to fight for it. Amongst other stories on the show were Riddick, Moss, and Arturo Huas clearing the competition. They had that dog in them, especially Huas. Dabakato, though, had the most focus, and I think it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out why. Bro was mm -hmm. so damn big and playing by his own rules. What about the woman? Shayna Baszler was hungry for competition. Nobody really wanted to fight, but she forced a fight and attracted the rest of the woman. It seemed like she was done. Huh, they were 54 overall, so you know how it ended. They were taking away the dancers, which I personally don't get, but whatever. The good part about this whole thing, though, is that guys were doing something. Especially if they had the background in sport. Ziggler here was doing very well. Marina Shafir debuted, and even Nia Jax made an appearance to absolutely nothing. She didn't want to wrestle. Fans in general weren't receptive to underground, and after WWE moved to the Thunderdome, that would become more apparent. Bobby mm -hmm. Lashley once again looked like the final boss of the show, destroying random people, and Dolph Ziggler even tried to beat some respect out of Cedric Alexander at one point. Some of the storylines on regular Raw even made their way to underground. Mm -hmm. The Hurt Business was dominant, destroying the likes of Ricochet and Apollo Crews. Kevin Owens and Aleister Black took their few to the mat. There was some stuff going on. But of course, back to Dabakato. He was the big guy over here. He was out here destroying Kevin Owens, Aleister Black. And these were matches. This was during their match. He interfered because he got bumped into. He left his mark and basically showed that he was the future. He was going to debut on the main roster, cause chaos. But we all know how that ended. But yeah. in storyline, because word was getting out of this thing, Braun Strowman and the bigger guys were appearing often. He went through Riddick and even dropped Ziggler before having a confrontation with Dabakato. Shane thought, why not next week? Of course, when it happened, the newcomer won, right? Wrong. Strowman dropped him and basically broke down Raw Underground. From there, it disappeared and nobody heard a word about it. <laughs> Apparently, a COVID outbreak happened around the September 28th episode of Raw and worried about the virus spreading. WWE put it on hold before outright canceling it. So Raw Underground after two months was officially over. Was mm -hmm. it missed? <laughs> Hell no. Yeah. The thing with the concept is that it wasn't thought out properly. What I mean by that is they just, they got the idea. Probably from Bloodsport, which was popping up a bit at the time, and thought, how do we do a WWE version? And another thing to mention is that it was just there. Of course, there's going to be some... <laughs> that picture of Shane is funny. <laughs> wrestlers and storylines with the lust for blood or just competition. But the problem with it is that it had no general stakes to it. No rewards, no incentive. Just Shane McMahon with B-Fab. Random stuff happens and that's it. At the same time, though, the show doesn't overstay its welcome. It just happens like that. You don't have a 30-minute show involving Underground. None of that. It's just a few minutes, and they move on to the next thing. The idea, though, lacked a lot to it, and if well thought out, it would have been better because, personally, I like the concept, you know? I like MMA. I watch MMA. I watch the pay-per-views, this and that. I take an interest in it, and if I were to see WWE wrestlers have their own scripted fights, I'd be interested in it a bit. It's a little niche. Seeing these wrestlers in a different environment is welcome for me. Dolph Ziggler, Chad Gable, hell, what if Brock Lesnar randomly showed up and oh, plowed no. through the competition? It just killed everybody. I think it would have been cool. Wrestlers who grew stressed with following the rules, entering a world where rules cease to exist and have to rely on brutality to survive. That's how I feel it should have been. Plus, they were building up some guys like Riddick Moss and Daba Kato, but by the end of it, they all lost to the regular guys. They looked good for a moment, especially Daba Kato, but by the end of it, they lost. If it were to continue afterwards, they probably should have built him up a bit more because these guys are underground originals. But yeah, that, that's raw underground. Weird idea. I kinda, I'm not going to lie. I kind of liked it a bit more after making the video. Still not good. It's not good. <laughs> in another world, this would have been even better than it was. I think there was a little potential there. There was a little potential for this because it's a niche, you know? Some people are going to be interested in seeing 
wrestlers, WWE wrestlers, I should know, doing their little MMA thing, even if it's scripted. You know, I was kind of interested in it because we don't usually see Dolph Ziggler, Eric, Ivar, Bobby Lashley. These guys have these fights straight up like this. You know, they usually bounce off the ropes, suplex, whatever. Here, they were fighting just to survive and win. Simple as that. And I like that concept, but it should have been well thought out in order for it to have become a success. So, yeah. All right, what did you guys think of Raw Underground? Please comment down below. Make sure you hit a punch on the like button. Hey, man. This was a good video. I'm going to go ahead and give the homie a like, man. I already subscribed to him. Wrestling, uh, wrestling's premiere. Me, personally, I just, I couldn't really get into it. I was just like, ah, uh, I don't know. This is not, it's not hidden. It's not hidden. You're, you're literally, you're trying to pretty much do a, somewhat of a work shoot for MMA. And it's just, it just wasn't hidden. You know, they tried something different. I give them credit for trying something different, getting, tapping into that world. But we all know it's, it's a work shoot. So we all know like it's it's not these guys really going out there trying to kill each other because if that was the case, a lot of these guys are on the main roster. They would get hurt. So it it you know it kind of it doesn't really it doesn't really play out the same way as a actual MMA fight because actual MMA fight these guys are getting hurt. They're trying to end each other. They're trying to break bones and tear ligaments. These guys are not really trying to do that. And even if they do have some type of MMA background, it, it still has that scripted element. And it just didn't really pan out as much as I think WWE wanted to. So, comment down below. Let me know. You know, do you guys, um, did you guys enjoy uh, Raw Underground? Did you guys want it to continue? Or did you guys feel like it was, it, 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 it didn't hit the mark and felt like it probably should have ended uh even sooner than what it did or in and do some of you guys miss it you know let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel road to 150k and i am still gonna speed the youtube wrestling champion of the world and also in the coach world heavyweight champion appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace